Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple portal in a 2D game inside of Godot. You'll see here we already have some things loaded into our default scene. The first thing is a simple character 2D. This is just the standard Godot icon, but it's movable. We also have a floor, which is just a simple collidable object. And we have our portal, which we will be working on. For right now, all that we have here is a mesh instance 2D a collision shape, which is just a rectangle around that mesh instance. And we also have a marker 2D. You'll see here it's pointed out a little bit in front of the mesh instance. This is essentially where we're gonna be teleporting to once we get that all configured. So you want that to be wherever the spawn point would be most ideal. The last thing that I did here was I set up our layers. So for collision, our character 2D is layer one and the mask is layer two. And for our portal, it's the opposite of that, so it's on layer 2, and the mask is layer 1. Now we can hop into our portal script, and we can start getting everything set up. It's just a basic Area 2D script. The first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new export variable. We're going to call this Landing Zone, <clears throat> and it's going to be of type Area 2D. Then we're going to want to set up our collisions, so we're going to select On Body Entered, and we're going to pick the portal. Now what we want to do here is just print out the word test and the body that has entered so that we can just test it to make sure it's working. And we'll run it. Okay, that seems to be working when we collide with the portal, so we know that that's all set. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop out of the code and I'm actually going to duplicate our portal, make a new portal. It will just be called Portal 2. And I'm going to drag it over to the other side of the screen and rotate it so that that pointer is facing the opposite way. Now, if I go back into my inspector, you'll see we have the landing zone export variable. And the landing zone for portal 1 is going to be portal 2. So the landing zone for portal 2 is going to be portal 1. Then we can hop back into our script. Now that we know this function's working, we can start setting up the code to actually implement this teleporting system. So we'll say at the top of the function var tp underscore point equals landing zone dot git node marker 2d dot global position. That's basically just going to be the point that we want to land. Then we can say body dot global position equals tp point. And again, body here is referring to our character, not the teleporter. So if we run it, we should be working. And we are. You'll see, though, if I try going back and forth or if I don't clear it far enough, it looks a, a little buggy. Now, there's a couple ways to fix this. Uh, the first most simple thing is just to move the marker 2Ds a little more forward. That won't really solve everything, as you'll see later on, but it solves it for now. We'll have to come up with a better fix in a little bit, though. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move one of these to make this into a bit more of a unique teleporter. So I'm going to just bring it up and rotate it a little bit. That looks good. So now if we run it, you'll see we can come out that one end. But our glitch is happening again, right? So what we need to do is get rid of this once and for all and just make it into a better teleportation system. And the way that we're going to do that is by hopping into the player code. We're going to say var ken tp equals true. <clears throat> and then back into our portal code, we'll say at the very top, if not body dot ken tp equals true, return. And then let's say it is okay and it passes. We'll say body.cantp equals false. And at the very bottom of our code, we're going to make a timer and wait for it. We can do that by saying await git tree create timer one and then timeout. So that will give us a timer. Once that timer goes away, we're going to set the body.cantp value back to true. So now we have a little bit of a delay. So we can instantly teleport which will stop any bugs from happening. So if we run it, we should be able to just go through the teleporter. And we can, and that looks great. And it works too, because there's a little bit of a cooldown period. So this way, even if you had the old teleporter set up, but you just don't want them to be able to teleport back and forth quickly, 
This could also accommodate that, right? You could put a one second delay, a 10 second delay, a 30 second delay, a half second delay, whatever you want. Just make a little cool down period for it. So that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know. And if you have any questions or are struggling, also let me know. I'll do my best to help you out in the comments. I hope you have a great day. Take it easy.